Hey, Earthly Peoples, it's May 31st, 2022. I felt like doing a news roundup today for no particular reason, just because I can, and you deserve to know about the collapse of your life-sustaining systems on the one planet you call home. Uh, but before I begin, I'd like to say a few things before I read a quick news roundup, like I said. Um... First off, there was a heat wave in the Northeast during the Boston Marathon, which injured several people had to be sent to the hospital from heat exhaustion. Uh, Russia is going to keep exporting, or Europe is going to keep importing oil from Russia and vow to cut down two-thirds, or around two-thirds by the end of the year. I mean, this goes to show you how completely fucking contradictory and hypocritical we are that we're essentially funding the war and for its neighboring country, which is just beyond evil. We're completely addicted. You know, we want to keep taking our vacations. I see uh, camper vans and trucks everywhere, you know, going on their little summer vacations without a care in the world. Um, I would just urge you that if you are affiliated with any banks that are funding fossil fuels, to immediately cut off ties with them, transfer different to a different account. Uh, I think there's an aspiration card out there. This is more of a morality thing and a conscience thing because when things start break, rapidly breaking down in the next few years and by the end of this decade, you'll wish you had done everything in your power to not be funding the destruction of your survival. So we're going to begin today's news roundup with an article in Rig Zone. The headline reads, G7 urges OPEC to pump more oil. Oh boy. I'll try to skim through these guys, just, you know, make it quick. Um, but also before also before I get to say that, I just want a quick shout out again. All my subscribers, you're so awesome. All of you from Quebec, aerosol masking, uh, Finland, Norway, uh, Jakarta, from, um, fuck, where all you guys are from. I mean, around the world. And if Ikaku, if you're so still subscribed, I think I scared some people away, but like, no, for real, you know, worldwide citizens here, like great stuff. Okay. I'll begin with the, with the article group of seven OPEC, uh, er, the group of seven, you know, that's Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, United Kingdom, United States urged, uh, OPEC to pump more oil quote. We call on oil and gas producing countries to act in a responsible manner to respond to tightening international markets. There's nothing responsible about pumping massive amounts of oil and CO2 in the atmosphere. In this case, CO2. Noting that OPEC has a key role to play. They have been pushing for the climate agenda, but the war has made consumer nations reassess their priorities, like short-term profits, right? Short-term energy security t trumping longer-term climate plans because sociopaths run this country, run the world. I already did a video on this about two years ago. Uh, it seems like some others are finally catching up, like Peter Kalmus and, and the so forth, stating, tweeting things like, oh, willful ignorance combined with, you know, knowledge of this stuff is sociopathy. Right, yeah, man, I mean, like, it's it's a curse, man. Why am I, why do I have to, why am I the one or a few that can see the world and see, that lives in the future, that lives ahead of my time? It's Dude, it's a curse. Nevertheless, we aim for relief measures to be temporarily and targeted to reaffirm our commitment to elimination of fossil fuel subsidies by 2025. So we're not even beginning the energy trans transition, guys. This is this is what the uh, the emphasis is there. Like we haven't even begun, okay? And hydrogen isn't gonna it isn't gonna fuel us. It's gonna make things worse. Nuclear, all of it. It's none of it is sustainable and causes and we need subsidies to make all these things work. Money. How is money fueled? By fossil fuels. The next article comes from Yahoo News. Why can't the U.S. stop soaring oil and gas prices? Huh. This came out uh, three days ago from Natalie Sherman. This one was pretty cringe. Hit me pretty hard. Texas oilman Jason Herrick is scrambling to pump more oil, chasing the promise of profits as oil prices soar. But despite his pr best efforts, his suspects output from his family-owned company will fall this year for a third year in a row. He's facing delays. He hunts for supplies to make the projects happen. These guys can't find steel pipes, okay? We can't even find, like, don't even, I don't want to go off on a tangent. Cool. Our job is to try to produce as much as we can, and we've done that. We're just so behind, we have a difficult time catching up. This is the oil baron in Texas. Yeah, we need to fucking hang this guy by his nutsack and um, razor blade his face. That'd be a fun time. It's not just one of the, for an oil baron. 
Um, not me. Uh, since the start of 2021, prices have uh, jumped slightly, jumped roughly twofold or more as demand soars back from the shock of COVID 2020 lockdowns, war in Ukraine, the market heats up. But that's, get this, as the market heats up, forecasts suggest that U.S. production will increase by about 1 million barrels per day this year. Put that in your latte. But that's less than 10%, not enough to meet the rise in demand, and a far cry from the response the last time prices were this high in 2014, when the U.S. output jumped 20% and the fracking revolution was in high gear. Revolution. They're trying to, you know, the market, here I'm going to skip ahead here, investors are pushing companies to share profits now instead of making long-term investments, given uncertainty over demand as the world pushes a shift away from fossil fuels, says the vice president of S&P Global. The market is worried that demand won't be there and the assets will be stranded, he says. If there's no long-term value in my stock price, it means I have to pay a very aggressive dividend. I mean, guys, it's all about money. It's not going back to the go-go days, he says, but the Ukraine war highlighted that we still live in a world of fossil fuels. The energy transition, it has been thrown away, but the conversation has been re rebalanced to include what we need in the short and medium term. Fuck the long term. Fuck your children's future. And you. No food for you in just a few years. No food. We see the Biden administration really wavering on its earlier climate commitments, says a research analyst at the Global Energy Monitor. In Canada, the fourth largest oil producer after the U.S., U.S. and Saudi Arabia and Russia, a liberal government has renewed talks about getting long-stalled oil and gas projects like terminals to export gas to Europe off the ground. I mean, guys, look, just like the straight up the emphasis of this summary is we're going 100% in the wrong fucking direction. It means our politicians are failing us. It means our leaders are failing us, our corporate executives are failing us, and most notably, our fellow citizens are failing us. Yes, it's at that point now. To be complicit is to be complacent, and to, be, to allow this continue, to not be talking to each other about this is, uh, is on all of us. And the last article I want to read is from Time. Oil, po this one, this is a real kicker. I'm not going to read the whole thing. You get the point. Oil companies posted huge profits. Here's where the cash will go. Hint, not climate. And this is from Time Magazine. I'm just going to read the, the lead in, in another paragraph. As consumers grapple with high fuel prices and politicians scramble to knock them down, oil companies are not making any sudden moves. That's because after years of low fuel prices, they're now enjoying a financial upswing, as demonstrated by a lucrative first quarter earnings report released to in late April and early May. We need to get a list of all the corporate and oil executives, go to their house and fucking murder them and burn their house down. All of them, okay? I mean, it's not a joking matter anymore now. Like if you really care about the future, you wouldn't be wearing fucking cow hats with sports teams on it. The, the college near here, all the sports teams are not doing a damn thing to address this issue. And I have a friend around here that still wears, like I wanna fucking shoot his hat off, okay? It's awful. Oil prices started to creep up in late 2021 due to supply constraints, but then turbocharged after Russia invaded Ukraine. In February, for, for Chevron, the upshot was $6.3 billion in profits what? last quarter, up from $1.4 billion a year ago. For ExxonMobil, profits more than doubled in the same period, from to, to $5.5 billion. Meanwhile, most of my generation is struggling to pay rent, to pay off their college debt. Here's another thing my friends suggested. Oh, one of his, one of his friends got a degree in Germany where they pay for your education. It would cost me $80,000 to get that education. She works for Volkswagen now as an engineer. Volkswagen lied about their car, their emissions standards repeatedly year after year. And these companies, uh, Volkswagen, ExxonMobil, the whole entire fossil fuel industry are reporting record profits. Guys, this is, this is straight up a kick in the nuts. The numbers were so also so rosy for European firms, even among those that took a hit from severing ties with their Russian investments. And then it talks about some other companies hitting profit levels. Here's, the, here's another kick in the nuts. For the most part, major oil companies aren't going to pour these billions of dollars into climate mitigation investments like carbon capture technologies, nor have they signaled any immediate intention to bolster oil production, despite calls from the heads of state to do so. They're fucking sociopaths, guys. Their inaction has spurred US and we need oil. We're literally dependent on it to go on our little rosy little vacations and 
feed our kids, you know, food on their table. They're in action to spur the US and European countries which are under pressure to keep fuel affordable to release oil reserves and replace Russian crude oil and liquid, liquid natural gas from other reserves, other sources. Despite those government efforts, oil prices have stayed above $100 a barrel. And our analysis from the Wall Street Journal found that the nine largest US oil producers spent more than 54% more in share repurchases and dividends in the first quarter than they are invested in new oil developments. Similarly, a recent report, report covering the 20 largest US oil companies uh, published by the environmental organization French Friends of the Earth, Consumer Watchdog Organization, Public and Citizen Bailout Watch, tallied $56 billion in new share buyback authorizations and roughly seven months since last October, compared with $11 billion announced in the nine months before that. And it gives a chart here of, of, of stock buybacks. I mean, this is this is a crime, guys. This is this is to the type of shit you go in the street and start throwing Molotov cocktails and complete civil unrest. And it's not happening. It's a delayed effect, right? That's what's going to happen in the next eight to ten to twenty years. That's what's going to happen. But this is this is the precursor to the follow up. Because how is everybody going to feel when their food supply is gone? They go back in time, do their do a little research, and like. When did this start? Oh, they were posting, they were make, getting rich off the destruction of your future. Guys, this is beyond gross. And if you don't say anything about this, or you're not talking about this amongst your friends, on your social media profiles, whatever, then you probably just need to be fucking shot in the head at this point. You're a useless piece of carbon, okay? You're a stupid little animal that doesn't care about its own future. You're not worth saving. Also, if you wear sports teams hats and you brag about people getting jobs and elected jobs and companies that um, subsidize and continue this insanity, you should be slapped too. All right, that's my done. I'm done rambling for today. Didn't make this too long of a video. Thanks for watching, guys. All of you, I appreciate you. Hit like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you later. Have a good day.